This is a Nebraska road trip plan that takes the traveler from western to central Nebraska, visiting two national monuments, a national historic site, two national historic landmarks, a national natural landmark, two historic outposts, along with four national historic trails and views of incredible geological formations. We start this road trip in northwest Nebraska to visit Toadstool Geological Park, Fort Robinson Museum and State Park, and Agate Fossil Beds National Monument before continuing south in western Nebraska into the Wildcat Hills. This road trip plan makes stops at Scotts Bluff National Monument, Chimney Rock National Historic Site, and Courthouse and Jail Rocks. We then briefly travel north to see Carhenge and then drive east along Highway 2 to enjoy the stunning Nebraska sand hills. At the Nebraska National Forest, we transition south towards North Platte to visit the Golden Spike Tower at Bailey Yard and the Buffalo Bill Ranch State Historic Park before continuing east for a stop at the Pony Express Station in Gothenburg and finishing in Kearney for the Great Platte River Road Archway Monument in Fort Kearney State Historic Park. If you only want to hear about a specific area, the chapters with times are listed in the description. If you have experience or insight into any of these destinations, please share your thoughts in the comments section so travelers get another perspective and more information. Please support this channel by subscribing and turn on the notification bell for new video alerts. If you are interested, this information is also on my website at travelguidesfromchris.com and there is a link to my Nebraska blog in the description of this video. You'll need at least a week to enjoy exploring the beautiful landscapes and rich history of Nebraska. But if you only have a couple days, I hope to give you enough information for you to decide what sites you'd like to visit. If you have additional time or are passing through, I suggest adding sites from nearby Kansas or the Black Hills of South Dakota to your trip. A link to these travel guide videos are in the description and are part of this channel's Road Trip Guides playlist. At the end of this guide, I will list by region other great Nebraska sites worth exploring. The name Nebraska comes from the Oto Native American word for Flat River, the name given for the Flat River that runs through the state. Nebraska is a peaceful state with some of the friendliest people you will come across. The state takes time and miles to explore, but gives a wonderful opportunity to enjoy fantastic scenery and one-of-a-kind natural wonders. You will be surprised and delighted. There is an endless view of the sky, a hearty yet lovely landscape, and it's a great place to relax. Be prepared for the wind in Nebraska, and you will be rewarded with wide open spaces and very little traffic and hassle along the route. The changing of the unique terrain is rewarding to watch, especially when driving through the gentle, breathtaking Sand Hills region. Western Nebraska features recognizable landmarks that Native Americans, fur traders, and pioneer travelers used as markers of how far they had traveled. The Wildcat Hill Buttes of Courthouse and Jail Rocks, Chimney Rock, and then Scotts Bluff were indicators that the Rocky Mountains were approaching. The Lewis and Clark, Oregon, California, and Mormon trails pass through Nebraska. The National Park System has an audio tour and app for travelers to follow along while driving through the region. Many settlers migrated through the area during the mid-19th century thanks to the Gold Rush of 1849 and the Homestead Act of 1862. During the Gold Rush, people headed out west to make fast money, while the Homestead Act mandated that those who took 160 acres of surveyed government land had to improve the plot by building and cultivating the land. During this time, Nebraska became a productive agriculture state for the country and today produces over 1 billion bushels of corn annually and leads the nation in beef exports. Cows in the corn husker state outnumber people 3 to 1. Nebraska has the most irrigated cropland in the United States, with most of the water drawn from the Ogallala Aquifer or diverted from nearby bodies of water. The Ogallala Aquifer is a huge table of underground water that is located beneath most of the Great Plains. However, two-thirds of the volume is under Nebraska. The largest migration of sandhill cranes occur annually in Nebraska, beginning late February through April. 
while hiking in Nebraska, be on the lookout for prairie rattlesnakes. Rattlesnakes usually avoid humans, so if you encounter one, give them space for them to retreat. They only attack when threatened. We start this road trip in the Ogallala National Grasslands at the Toadstool Geological Park. In Northwest Nebraska, there are unusual rock formations that resemble toadstools. Many call Toadstool Geological Park the moonscape of the Badlands, and it is comparable to Surrealist landscapes. The unique formations are layers of sandstone and faster eroding clay that have left large caps on top of pillars that eventually collapse. The park features fossil tracks preserved in stone from 30 million years ago. Some of the animals include ancient dogs, horses, and rhinoceroses, along with other extinct animals. There are informative signs and an interpretive brochure for self-guided tours that detail the geology and the history of the region. The one-mile dirt hiking loop trailhead begins at the picnic area and contains access to the three-mile bison trail. The longer trek takes the hiker to the Hudson Mig bone bed, which is the largest bison bone bed in North America. Toadstool Geological Park requires self-registration and is $3 for day use and $15 to dry camp. The park provides six first-come, first-served campsites, two vault toilets, and no running water. To reach the park, you will need to drive a 17-mile gravel road. Our next destination, Fort Robinson, is less than an hour away. Fort Robinson State Park is a National Historic Landmark and was one of the largest frontier U.S. Army forts in the late 19th century during the Indian Wars and remained in use until after World War II. Today, it is a public recreation park with 22,000 acres of preservation areas with several historic structures. The state park features lodging from single rooms to buildings that can accommodate up to 60 people, as well as different camping options. There are two museums, the Trailside Museum and the Fort Robinson Museum. Additionally, the state park features a buffalo herd, stagecoach rides, trout fishing, hiking, biking, golfing, a restaurant and store, and a playhouse in the summer, among other activities. Fort Robinson has become a vacation and family reunion getaway. Fort Robinson began as one of three locations for the Red Cloud Agency, a precursor to modern Indian reservations. Troops arrived in 1874, establishing the location as Camp Robinson, named after a lieutenant killed a month before by Native Americans while escorting a woodcutting party near Fort Laramie. The Red Cloud Agency left in 1877 while Fort Robinson developed into a strategic post against the Northern Cheyenne and Lakota tribes. Once the railroad arrived, Fort Robinson surpassed Fort Laramie as the most important military base of operations in the region. The Lakota leader, Tasanke Wiko, best known as Crazy Horse, and famous for his role in the resonating defeat of Custard and the 7th Cavalry at the Battle of Little Bighorn, spent his remaining days at Fort Robinson a year after the famous battle. His tribe surrendered to General Crook at the Red Cloud Agency after suffering from cold and starvation. Crazy Horse was fatally wounded by a bayonet in 1877 at the age of 35, following a fight with soldiers who were trying to imprison him into a cell. There is a historic marker in front of the reconstructed 1874 guardhouse where Crazy Horse was killed. Another significant event is the Fort Robinson Massacre, which occurred in the winter of 1878 to 1879. 350 Northern Cheyenne led by Little Wolf and Dull Knife escaped from the Darlington Agency in the Southern Cheyenne Reservation, part of present-day Oklahoma. The Native Americans wanted to return to their ancestral homelands after living in horrible conditions at the agency. The large party of natives split into two directions, with Little Wolf's group returning to Montana and Dull Knife's heading to the Black Hills. Dull Knife's party was intercepted near Fort Robinson and after a battle lost in between 32 to 64 people with an additional 23 wounded and the remaining 78 captured. Others who have stayed at Fort Robinson include African American Buffalo Soldiers, the K-9 Corps, and German Prisoners of War. The historic fort has a record of significant events, transitions, and importance. A visit to the Museum and History Center educates the traveler on notable events and military activities at the fort. 45 minutes from Fort Robinson 
is Agate Fossil Beds National Monument. Agate Fossil Beds National Monument is an internationally recognized fossil site of Miocene Age mammals that was established as a national monument in 1965. Fossils from 18 to 23 million years ago were found in two hills which would later become known as Carnegie and University Hills. In 1878, James H. Cook, a local rancher, discovered fossilized bones eroding from the outcrop on what is now known as Carnegie Hill. Paleontologists from around the country to include the Carnegie Museum at Pittsburgh and Yale University spent several summers excavating the sites. Agate Fossil Beds features prehistoric animal remains that the world hadn't seen when they were discovered in the late 19th century. Some of the extinct mammal species found at Agate are Menoceros, a pony-sized two-horned rhinoceros with three toes. Stenomylus, which resembled two feet tall gazelle camels and a bear dog almost as big as a polar bear. Agate Fossil Beds National Monument contains an incredible collection of Native American artifacts that are worth a visit on its own merits. The pieces are from James Cook, the rancher who found the fossils. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, the Cook family received gifts from Chief Red Cloud of the Lakota Sioux and other Northern Plains Native American tribes. These items were often in exchange for receiving beef, and hides were later tanned and painted. Some of the gifts were made especially for the Cooks, including buckskin suits for James' son Harold and John, gloves, and the painted hides showing scenes from the Battle of Little Bighorn, known to the Lakota as the Battle of Greasy Grass. Agate Fossil Beds National Monument is one of the most remote national parks. There are no food concessions there. Restaurants, grocery stores, and gas stations are 35 to 50 miles away. There are two relatively short trails at the park. The One Mile Demonolix Trail is where you can observe demonolixes, which are spiral burrows created from an ancient land beaver with powerful claws known as paleocasters. The paved 2.8 mile Fossil Hills Trail begins at the Visitor Center. This trail loops around University and Carnegie Hills. From Agate Fossil Beds, we head to the Wildcat Hills where you'll see Courthouse and Jail Rocks, Chimney Rock, and Scotts Bluff, which are all symbols of the Great Western Migration. These buttes rising above the flat landscape were recognizable landmarks for Native Americans, fur traders, and pioneer travelers on the Oregon, California, and Mormon trails, the Pony Express Trail, and the Sydney Black Hill Stage Road. The first Overland Trail landmark we visit is Scotts Bluff National Monument. Scotts Bluff is a collection of bluffs that rise 800 feet above the North Platte River and is made up of clay, sandstone, and volcano ash. Scotts Bluff can be seen for days by Plains natives who were following the buffalo herds during their seasonal migration, along with the approaching immigrants on overland trails that saw it as a significant milestone. Scott's Bluff was named after a clerk from the Rocky Mountain Fur Company who died near the bluff in 1828. The monument's visitor center consists of interactive learning exhibits and information boards that describe the importance of the area, those who journeyed the land, as well as the difficulties encountered. Near the visitor center and alongside the easy one mile Oregon Trail pathway, there are replica period wagons and artifacts on display from the mid 1800s and days of oxen and horse-drawn travel. The park has four miles of hiking trails. The moderate Saddle Rock Trail provides a paved footpath that treks to the summit of the monument and features a foot tunnel with a picturesque view from both sides. During the walk, you can follow along to the park's interesting audio guide while observing the different types of rocks as you travel up the bluff. Visitors can drive up to the top of the monument via Scotts Bluff Summit Road or take the park's summit shuttle option. Since the concrete road is the oldest in Nebraska and has three low clearance tunnels and sharp curves, vehicles longer than 25 feet and are higher than 11 feet 7 inches and all trailers are prohibited. Once on the summit, you can view Chimney Rock from the North Overlook. Our next destination is Chimney Rock National Historic Site. Chimney Rock is a remnant of the erosion of the bluffs at the edge of the North Platte Valley. The slender spire with a conical base rises nearly 300 feet above the surrounding valley and is visible for many miles. 
Chimney Rock is Nebraska's unofficial state symbol and is commonly featured on license plates, signs, and packaging. The iconic rock structure is the most noted landmark in Overland Immigrants' journals. The solitary column could be seen by pioneer travelers for three days on their transcontinental journey west. It signaled that they were heading into the second, most difficult part of their travels and that the mountain passage was near. Chimney Rock has an outstanding museum that contains informative panels explaining life on the migratory route and an incredible collection of artifacts, artwork, and replica supplies. If you are interested in hiking up to Chimney Rock, Note that the one mile rugged path will be overgrown so wear pants and stay alert for possible prairie rattlesnakes. Dogs are not allowed on the trail. The trailhead is not at the museum but a half a mile south on 62F and a turn west towards the Chimney Rock Cemetery where you will find a gravel parking lot. There is a false trailhead on the right next to a fence to so ensure that you stay left towards the rock. If you are interested, there is a highly rated private campground with great views of Chimney Rock and Cattle Ranch land a mile from the museum. It's called Chimney Rock Pioneer Crossing Campground and provides RV hookups. Our final location in the Wildcat Hills was the first monumental rock that pioneer travelers encountered on their journey through the plains. Courthouse and Jail Rocks rise 400 feet above the North Platte Valley and are erosional remnants of an ancient plateau composed of clay and sandstone. Immigrants named the rock structures after familiar man-made things and other recorded labels include Castle and Solitary Tower. Courthouse and Jail Rocks are listed in the National Register of Historic Places. If you are interested in getting closer to the unique buttes, there is a dirt road a half a mile south from the historic marker that will bring you to a parking lot and features a short, moderate hike. Dogs on a leash are allowed. Our next stop is an alliance for a quirky attraction. Carhenge is a replica of England's Stonehenge, which matches the proportions of the monument. The creator Jim Riders, a local Alliance farmer, became intrigued by Stonehenge during his time living in England. Jim realized that the large standing stones of Stonehenge were similar in size to the vintage American automobiles from the 50s and 60s. He knew there were a lot of old abandoned vehicles in the area, so he developed the idea of creating his own monument. During the summer of 1987, Jim and family members built Carhenge in six days with a backhoe and tractor. They created the replica as a memorial to Jim's late father, who was raised on the land. Carhenge contains 38 vintage cars rescued from nearby farms and dumps. The Carhenge Complex is a true open-air art museum that contains other unique pieces in addition to the Carhenge Memorial. All vehicles on site have been spray-painted gray, the windows covered with steel plates, and the wheels welded to the vehicle. Initially, citizens of Alliance saw Carhenge as a junkyard and disliked the display. However, in August 2013, the city voted to become Carhenge's official owner, giving its blessing to the monument and guaranteeing its preservation. In 2020, TripAdvisor awarded Carhenge the Traveler's Choice Award, which is only awarded to the top 10% of attractions worldwide. Carhenge is open year-round from dawn to dusk. From Alliance, we travel down Highway 2 for an incredible scenic drive through Nebraska's sand hills. The sand hills are 19,000 square miles of sand dunes and make up one fourth of the Nebraskan landscape. The sand dunes are stabilized by grass and reach heights up to 300 feet. The natural wonder was created from deposited sands from an ancient sea that were carried to the region by wind. The Nebraska sand hills are a national natural landmark and is the world's most intact grasslands. The area is one of the country's most isolated and is mostly used for cattle ranching. If you are traveling to the region in early spring, you'll observe over 500,000 sandhill cranes migrate through the area. Bird watchers travel here during this time to enjoy the incredible scene. The sand hills can be viewed for 272 miles along Highway 2, and there is an opportunity along the rural route for a small town tourist stop in Broken Bow. This road trip plan turns south in the center of Nebraska sand hills on Highway 83. There is a great option for a stop here at the Nebraska National Forest, the world's largest hand-planted forest. 
The Nebraska National Forest's Bessie Recreation Complex provides camping, hiking, fishing, among other outdoor activities.